Well, that's good news. You don't have to be a genius to be a good scientist, though it does take curiosity, imagination, and hard work. But is it fun? Shh. I mean, there is a thing that I get to do from time to time repetitiously, which is very exciting and still excites me. I got to do it again this week for the first time in a, in, in a while, which is suddenly realise that I'm the first person who's understood something. Well, um, after I did my postdoc in London, I went on to Amsterdam. I was working in the Netherlands and I worked in a very small biotech company. Was, they had this really amazing chicken virus that had this really amazing protein that just sort of caused cancer cells to commit suicide, but when you put it on healthy cells, it didn't do anything. So it looked like a sort of magic bullet. Uh, and that then led me to my PhD. Uh, I moved up to the northeast of Scotland, to the University of Aberdeen, to do that. Uh, and I worked with a guy called Professor Paul Fowler. Uh, and I have to say that that three years of my PhD was the best three years of my life. Yeah, I, 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 I absolutely loved it. And I had a very good supervisor. My colleagues were, we had a great team, but also is the fact that I had this freedom to develop my interest and to study an area and make it my own. It was really interesting. I worked on that for a number of years and we worked out the, the pathways behind the specificity, the reason that it killed cancer cells and not normal cells. And we patented it, so I was an inventor on a patent. And then the idea was taken up by a big German pharmaceutical company. And the last I heard, this thing had gone into clinical trials, so they were uh, testing it in humans. So for me, although it was a really strange, uh, quirky project, I'm very, very proud of that work. I absolutely loved it. There was nothing like that buzz of being in the laboratory and getting something to work. And even when things didn't work, you still enjoyed the sort of interaction with people saying, why didn't it work? How can I get it to work? Um, and it really was an amazing, amazing experience. I've manipulated a gene, put it into a bacterial cell, purified and enriched that protein from the bacteria. Then I've managed to crystallize that, which is it's a quite a large molecule. It's not like salt, it's about 10,000 times the size of salt. And then shot that with x-rays. I started out trying to understand the control of hemoglobin synthesis. So hemoglobin, as you know, is the protein that carries oxygen. It's bright red in color because it has four protein chains and two and four heme groups. And the iron in the heme is what carries the oxygen. OK, so I was really in intrigued by uh, findings showing that if you deprived these red cells of iron, they didn't make any hemoglobin. Now, they could have made, of course, they couldn't make hemoglobin because they didn't have iron, but they could have made the globin, the protein bit, and then put the heme in later, but they didn't. They actually shut off the protein synthesis. And Richard Jackson, a colleague, a very dear colleague, and I worked on this for, I don't know, a total of about 10 years, I suppose, before we, 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 we cracked it. And then from that worked backwards to get a, a model of the, the protein at atomic resolutions, knowing where all the atoms are. So when I step back, it's, it's a long process going from gene manipulation all the way to getting a structure, but it's quite exciting when you finally get that structure. Working that out was incredibly satisfying because it went through all kinds of highs and lows. We had to follow a very tortuous path beforehand to work out a lot of things before we got to the point where we could really ask the real question, as it turned out. We didn't know that when we started. but So it was a long and winding road. And then one day, you know, we just suddenly, ta-da, <laughs> you, 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 you get the answer. So Being a scientist is actually quite a treat because it allows you to carry on being in that Ch that's slightly childish in the best sense of the word, that childish state of asking why. Why is the sky blue? You know, why does the wood catch fire? Why are the flowers coming out in spring? This kind of stuff that all, that all sounds very childish and, and a little bit silly, but actually is immensely profound. And being allowed to carry on asking those questions and actually getting paid for it uh, seemed to me a, a fabulous route through life. Still does.